Uh, good to see the, the screen full here. And I think we're, we're going to get some more as we go. But uh, Matt Weldy, and I'm fortunate to serve as executive director for the Monogram Club and excited to bring our baseball alums and, and that specific subset of our membership together tonight for a, a State of the Union, kind of a sneak peek on what's going on with the program. And thanks to Coach Stiffler, this is the third Zoom call that we've done since he's taken just over a year ago. And uh, what I appreciate most about him is in the alumni engagement space is he's coming to us to say, hey, guys, it's time to do another one of these, right? So he sees the value in this. We're, we're certainly not chasing him for, for these kinds of things. So we appreciate his time. i um, excited for, for what we're going to see on the field and, and excited to keep you guys connected to that program and, and get you back to campus. We're going to talk about um, some of those opportunities coming up here in the fall. So um, the way we've done this in the past, for those of you who've been on, we, we, we like the flow of an alum kind of co-hosting and, and asking some questions and making it interactive. And thanks to you all for pre-submitting questions. Um, so we'll, get, we'll go ahead and dive in here. Um, we will uh, we'll be joined by Steve Solman, uh, Steve, an 04 grad, uh, who a lot of you know, earned All-American and academic All-American honors during his time uh, down in the, the Fighting Irish uniform. Also a member of the 02 College World Series team. I had to check with Steve today, but this is year 12 back at Notre Dame, working in a professional capacity and, and he's a member of our university relations team, but an amazing ambassador for Notre Dame, the university, athletics, baseball, you name it. Um, he just checks all those boxes and we appreciate having him on our team. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet now and I'm going to turn it over to Steve and uh, appreciate you being with us, bud. Uh, thanks, Matt. Happy to be here. I was just running around. I'm at my office right now. And they turned the lights off on me, so I was around trying to find a spot. Um, but we're good to go now, so um, hopefully nobody walks in. But uh, I appreciate the time. As Matt said, I am uh, an 04 grad. I uh, played second base under Paul Maneri. Followed the footsteps of my much, much, much older brother, Scott, who Randall Brooks knows well. Um, he played center field and wide receiver for the Irish way back in the day. But uh, I think he was trying to join this call. I don't know if he got on or not. But um, after graduation, had the opportunity to play in the Brewers organization for about four or five years. And then finally made my way back to, uh, to Notre Dame in the fall of 11 when I joined the academic services for student athletes. Uh, team and, and actually had the opportunity to serve as a counselor for the baseball program for about five and a half years. And then in uh, December 2016 is when I was able to uh, to finally make my way into where my, I currently stand, and that's in the development department. I work as a fundraiser for the university and have the opportunity to cover our New York metro region. Um, so I'll make it out to to New York City on a on a pretty consistent basis. So um, that's kind of my background. I uh, appreciate the opportunity, Matt. I see a lot of familiar faces on here. It was good to see some of the guys catching up, even as we were kind of waiting and, and getting things started. Um, I'm excited to uh, to have this conversation with uh, with Coach Stifler. Um, I've gotten to know Sean well um, over these last uh, these last couple of years or that, that this last year that he's been here. Um, he is the John P. and Catherine Murphy head coach for the Irish, and he's in his, um, I think he's the 22nd head coach for the Irish, if I read that correctly. Um, he spent the previous, I think, 15 years at uh, at VCU, uh, 10 of those as their head coach, and did an incredible job uh, there before coming to us. So, uh, Coach, appreciate you uh, you being here in terms of the structure of the call, um, I appreciate all of the the questions that were submitted uh, coming in because that helps us kind of create uh, you know a conversation here. Um, I'll, I'll try to touch upon all those questions if I can, and then um, you know we'll get to, into some some of the stuff where you know coach can let us know how we can be helpful in terms of supporting the program, and then try to finish up with an opportunity for some live questions at the end. Um, so coach, I, I feel like just kind of jumping in and, and getting started here. Um, obviously it's been one year in, how you feeling? How did, how'd you feel about last season? <laughs> well, first off, uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you for doing this. And, and, uh, thank you to Matt and, and Sean for making this so easy for me to approach this format and, and to see everybody. <clears throat> first off, I could, 
I think we need to do one of these Zooms where I just keep my my screen blank and listen to you guys go back and forth for about an hour because that is uh, that's good comedy and it's it, there's I tell you it's said all the time but there is nothing like getting baseball players back together it's almost like being in a clubhouse right now so in fact I am in the clubhouse um, I haven't <laughs> haven't head home quite yet uh, but but again thank you all for joining and 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 so thankful to be here and, and as Steve mentioned we're we're starting year two. And I'm, and I'm glad it's year two, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, year one for sure was an amazing opportunity. And, and, uh, you know, looking back, I was just talking with my staff uh, about, you know, two or three days ago, just, just as we were heading out to skill work, how much more comfortable, I think we all feel in our skin. Um, and, and, and that's including the players, you know, just, just knowing each other and having a feel for what we're going to get, having a rhythm for the Notre Dame academic and fall calendar. I mean, it's, the opening opening weekend for football at home. And that has its own rhythm as well as, as people are coming on to campus and getting an opportunity to meet with recruits and, and, and alumni such as yourself throughout the weekend. So just having that rhythm and, and understanding it is, is such a, such a, a, a relief for me and, and, and making me, myself feel much more comfortable. And, um, and, you know, when you look back at year one, you're, you're never, if I was ever going to be satisfied, I shouldn't be your head coach, you know, that, uh, you know, only one team ends on a win, <clears throat> but uh, but certainly was proud of the progress, proud of the, proud of the progress of our staff, proud of the things we implemented. Um, you know, probably a game or two short of where we needed, where we wanted to be to make the NCAA tournament, and that that hurt. I mean, that, there was a lot of sting, and I'm hoping that sting turns into motivation for the new group. Um, but I definitely felt we we played well enough to be a tournament team. Um, you know, some injuries, some different things that you that that happens and, and it happens to everybody just at the end of the day that the committee fell a little bit short. But the thing that made me most proud of last year's group was, uh, you know, through everything, we never got red hot. But I tell you what, we never we never got ice cold either. It was uh, there was many, many times where I thought, oh, is this the weekend? Maybe we don't respond or maybe we don't come back. And every time they got back up off the mat and that that. Uh, I think that's a culture piece of this of this university and this athletic department because it certainly wasn't anything that I had done at that point. Um, you know, so so really proud. Had had so many guys graduate with their second degrees. You know, I think last year we had nine double domers um, on that team, which is really really cool. And those guys are on out right now, have in successful jobs and and doing wonderful. And and I've spoken to many of them so. You know, all in all, it was it was a fast year. My head spun at times for sure, and uh, but certainly very gratifying. Getting a chance to meet some of you and 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 many of you, and I think that the thing that as you come into year two, you know, meeting the you you meet so many people, and now those those meetings are turning into relationships that I know I'll have for a very long time, and and so that is something that has really been rewarding for me is. Many of you are becoming friends now, to be quite honest with you. And so so I appreciate all of you. I appreciate your support. I've gotten many texts, letters of support from you all. So so I, I do want to say thank you. And again, Steve, thank you for for emceeing this tonight. And, and I don't want to talk too long. But, uh, I want to get through these questions for these guys. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. And I'll I'll try to cut you off if I if I need to. Um, <laughs> But you, you look back at year one, you, like you said, you come up a little short, I'd say with what, five to 10 games left in the season, you felt like you were in a pretty good spot and just couldn't couldn't quite pull it off. You know, Notre Dame is a different animal uh, than than I would say most places out there. But, you know, definitely from, you know, the VCUs of the world, uh, George Mason's of the world. What when you look at was there one lesson, two lessons when you look back that you, you took from last year that you can try to to improve on moving forward? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I don't, you know, I think, I think some of those questions were things that I reflected on from a practice style or, or from a setup. I will tell you this. I, I, I think the players could have taken on more than I asked them to. And, and, and um, you, you know, I, I think you come in and, and, and you're new, they're new and everybody's kind of feeling each other out and you, you forget that at the end of the day, they are young men and they just want to be led. And they want to be, you know, they want to be made, made to feel comfortable. And I probably, I probably took a step back and maybe for the first couple months was a little bit, um, a little bit too get to know you. And I, I would have implemented some things a little bit more, more certain and more sudden. 
because uh, I'm not sure we are ready from an urgency standpoint to to play early in the season, and that that effect that I think that ended up affecting us down the stretch. Um, but you know, you know, all in all, you know, it's just the, you know, everyone could say the travel, you can say the leg, you can say all those things. At the end of the day, it's baseball. Everybody's dealing with some type of scenario that's not ideal. Um, I think just at the end of the day, for me, the biggest thing to know is that these guys are so high level that they can take on a lot of strain um, as long as as long as we, we manage it correctly, even though and as long as they understand that the that, that they're cared for and that they're and that they're loved. And, and I think at the end of the day, they are they are just really, really special guys, as you guys all are. And, and I think that um, really just just. They want to be pushed. They want to exceed their their own expectations, and and really just cr- creating that environment earlier is the biggest thing I would have taken away. Yeah, for sure. When when you look back at this season, any uh, any highlights? I know, for instance, I was uh, you know I know a highlight for a lot of a lot of folks, and even some of the guys that I worked with when um, when I was an academic counselor in those you know that 2011 to 2016 space. Um, we're excited to get back here for the, the Ricky Palmer weekend. And yeah. um, I know that was a highlight for a lot of guys. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it and I was bummed that I missed it. Um, but, you know, obviously, in addition to that, and if you want to speak to that a little bit, um, but also any other just highlights that uh, that you look upon and, and you're proud of. Yeah, I, I think I think, it, you know, starting with the Ricky Palmer weekend um, to get a chance to meet his family. And then I was on several Zoom calls with classmates, teammates, family members, um, that quite honestly, I left in tears, you know, I mean, just yeah. the impact that he had on, uh, on the people around him. So to have hey, the coach, if you can speak a little bit to Ricky, I'm not sure everybody on the call knows, knows Ricky's background and I'm happy to as well, whatever, if you feel comfortable just speaking a little bit to that, that background. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Ricky was, um, uh, Ricky was a player on the team in the mid, in the, in the mid two thousands, mid to back end two thousands. And, um, you know, several years ago was stricken with cancer right during COVID um, and lost that battle. Um, and, and so <clears throat> several teammates, several classmates, he was just that guy from my understanding. And again, I didn't play with him and I'm just speaking from stories that I heard secondhand that just made the locker room better. He just made every guy, every guy in the room. He lit up the room when he walked in, um, created energy everywhere he was going, understood his role might not be to serve on the field, but was serving off the field and everything he did. And, and people were just really attracted to him from that standpoint. And really, really, he cared for people and, and he was very cared for. And so we had an opportunity uh, this past, this past April to have his family um, and many of his loved ones back and many of his teammates and dedicate a locker to him and uh, dedicate a, a catcher's locker to him. And, and I know right now we're currently, you know, continuing to try to fund his scholarship. And we're close to being there. I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood about seventy thousand dollars yet to go on that, but we're climbing on that. We certainly want to get that endowed because I think that can be really, really special uh, for his family as well. But to have those teammates back, to see how much they cared about him, to see how much, uh, and just to see that connection, and it, it was special. Uh, the, we were playing Florida State at that weekend, and Chuck Ristano was here, who coached who coached Ricky. We had an opportunity to have Chuck um, at the ceremony as well. Weather was brutal. Oh, go figure. And, um, you know, and so we had to kind of we had to kind of get around that a little bit, but we were we were able to make it and just uh, what a beautiful family. So that was certainly certainly a highlight. Uh, you know, I think I think the sweep of, of Virginia was a big moment, not because of the sweep, but because we just come off a weekend at Clemson where we had two pitchers go down that were significant parts um, to our, to our season. And, and really, at that point, I thought this this has a chance. Virginia was at that point, like 32 and four and they were ranked number three in the nation and they came into town and, and we, uh, we pulled together a sweep and I, and that just showed me, you know, mostly just so proud of, you know, our guts and the way the guys performed and, and the way they battled. Certainly I think winning, uh, I think the first home series and, and uh, the first ACC home series versus Louisville, also another highlight. Um, as well so that was that was a big moment for our guys who were certainly fired up about that as you know as well so um, you know so those were those were weekends that I that I kind of can remember remember I thought were were really really big and and then uh, you know there you know you look back at certain games a win at Wake Forest on Sunday where it wasn't going well for us at the time and 
and we weren't pitching well at the time. And and Jack uh, Jack Finley took the mound and would not be denied and and got us a win out of Wake when they you know when they were number one in the country. So that was another big scenario for us as well. So I think there was uh, there were several times, like I said, the big thing for me is this team never never laid down and never quit, and really really proud of that. Nice, nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past Ricky on that Florida State weekend either to make sure that the weather was poor because <laughs> we know this, we know those Seminoles that want no part of of the bad weather up here in South Bend. So, um, well, nice. Well, um, transitioning a little bit, there were a couple questions from from different guys just on like recruiting your philosophy. Um, so maybe even just talking about, you know, obviously the grad transfer space is a huge space for us. I was just, uh, I don't know how many grad transfers you got coming in this year. I know there was a good amount of them last year. How are you approaching that balance between like the high school recruiting with the the transfer portal and transfer portal undergrad can be tough from our perspective uh, because of the challenges academically, but uh, the, the grad transfer seems to to be a sweet spot for us. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. I, you know, I, I think the big thing to, to understand is, is so for our staff, the 2024 class is the first stat is the first class that we recruit that we've had any recruits on. Okay. So and that means those are current, those are going to be seniors that graduate from high school in 2024, correct? That's right. That's right. So the current incoming senior class is the first group that, that we will have recruited. And, and our philosophy is this is a, this needs to be a program built on high school development. Um, I, I think that's going to always be, and, and really, to be honest with you, I, you know, it, it's a national brand, but we do want to start in the Midwest. We're, we're, we're trying to start from St. Louis and basically through Pittsburgh. We think there's so many good schools and you look up every year, the teams in the World Series and they have really good players from from that area. So we, we want to start there for sure and then hit hit other pockets and other areas that we know are, are really good and, and attractive for Notre Dame. But we do want to be we do want to be high school heavy for certain. Just the makeup of the roster, you know, as we came in, there just wasn't a lot of underclass players right now because Notre Dame had been so old and so top heavy from a graduate <clears throat> situation over the last three years since COVID. So we had no choice but to continue. We had to add another piece of the graduate transfers to this to this class as well. I think we have 10 or 11 of them right now um on the roster um as well so we had to hit that one more time just to help help kind of uh you know plug the hole until we feel like we're back to where those classes start to get evened out and and the full um effect from COVID is 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 back and and we're not feeling that as much we feel that like that will start happening in 2024 um the grad the grad transfer is is an area uh for for Notre Dame it's the one area that we can get we can get transfers in, as as Steve mentioned. You know, the uh, underclass transfer is just not just not very easy here, especially as you get after year one, and perhaps year two. But that's you know the grad transfer is very very attractive to all programs around the country. It's not just ours. I mean, it's you know anybody looking for an older player um, is obviously going to go into that grad transfer market, and that market is coming to an end. We're starting to dry up. Because COVID, the the extra year of COVID, the COVID exemption is coming to an end at the end of this year as well. So that that's going to be something that I, you know, we can still exploit and get into, but I don't know if that's going to continue to be our sweet spot. I still think it's high school players who believe uh, in academics, who believe in the Notre Dame mission, who believe in what Notre Dame's about, and those families who have prepared for that. And I think that's going to continue to be where we want to um make you know kind of make our hay and it's been it's been great the 24 class um you know currently right now we have the number one player ranked in indiana uh the number two player in ohio uh, one of the top three players in illinois so you know we're, we have we we have gotten great response um logan robbins seth bolts ryan munger have done an unbelievable job scouring the uh the country to find to find uh very very attractive players and i'm excited about the 23 class it, the, the class that's currently on campus i don't want to say i don't want to sound like i'm not um th there's a lot of talent in that class especially on the pitching side is really really um really really going to be cool to see and really really exciting but we really felt like we had to add some grad school depth and some maturity um to uh, to be able to compete this year and and, and keep and, and bridge that gap. 
Um, and I don't know, I had to jump, I got kicked out there for a second, so I don't know if there were any questions in between there. But, you know, of the 11.7 scholarships, so obviously Notre Dame's a fully funded program. Can you give us a, just a sense of like how many guys does that impact? You know, the, the 11.7, there's, you know, obviously very few full ride scholarships on the, on the baseball program. But when you're bringing in transfer guys and, and things like that, there was just a question about, you know, the, the scholarships and how they're kind of divvied up. Yeah, absolutely. So 11.7 uh, and the NCAA, um, of course, expanded the roster this past year. So we now are allowed to, to break that 11.7 up amongst 30 players. Uh, and we can take our roster 240. So they added three more players. We can we can give scholarship to three more players, but they didn't give us any more any more money to do it with. Um, but so yeah, you you have to break that up. I mean, obviously, a lot of our players here, and many of you probably on this call, are um, are a product of Notre Dame financial aid. You know, we have to be able to use uh, the financial aid that the institution helps us with the need based financial aid. However, Notre Dame is is unique from the standpoint we cannot get we cannot stack athletic financial aid and or I'm sorry athletic aid with with need based financial aid here at Notre Dame. We are unable uh, currently to do that, which um, which a lot you know a lot of schools in our league can. That's that's something a lot of schools are fortunate enough to do. So we really have to be wise with our dollar. We have to you know when we get an opportunity to find a young man who his family could be um, who really could benefit from that need-based aid we go at them hard you know we go at them hard because that guy can really help us help us make up some ground and and you know many of our best players and, and like you guys are on that financial aid piece but and then when you get to the grad school piece the grad school piece is, is tough because under the new transfer portal in the market uh grad school guys are really really expensive for for programs between nil and just the different ways teams can stack can stack money. So I'm really proud of the job our staff did of being creative of ways to, to get these grad guys in, to get them into these, uh, into these master's programs. It does help that we, uh, we do offer these one year master programs in, in different, different departments. That's, that's, that is still very, very attractive. And, it, and it's very attractive that we have, have a need and guys are, guys are willing to play right away uh, for certain. So, you know, it's, you know, it's a tough time in college baseball. It's a tough time in college athletics for certain. It's it's much different than it was for even four or five years ago, much different than it was 10, 15 years ago for certain. The NIL and the transfer portal have changed, have changed everything. And that market, you know, over the summer is um it's the wild, wild west. That's the only way I can say it. It's yeah. I have stories that are for another Zoom. Um, yeah. you know, that 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 it was an interesting summer and, and so much of my focus was in our own roster, not necessarily the incoming roster. That's sure. where a lot of my attention was, was, was based. So it's, uh, we'll, uh, there were definitely a couple of questions out there about NIL. And if we have some time near the end, we'll, we'll yeah, jump on that a little bit, but yeah, and I'm happy to be transparent about yeah. it. And so it's, it's a part of it, but, but as we speak right now, I mean, I think, you know, between everybody in our roster is getting some type of aid, whether it come from the institution or, or come from baseball. Yep. Nice. That's great. Um, transitioning to the, like the current team, um, you know, obviously still early on in fall ball, you know, you, you, you probably gotten a short look at some of these, um, these grad transfers, whether that's in the field, whether they're, they're pitchers, um, you know, who are a couple guys that have stood out so far, who are guys that, you know, you, we got the Jack Pennies of the world. Yes. Devon, the, stop, sure. uh, the Moreno's of the world. And, and uh, guys that we know are, are going to be in the picture next year and, and contributed quite a bit this this past year. But, I mean, you do. You, you lose a lot of guys, a lot of, a lot of graduates on that roster, the Prisoners, the, the Coatsies, the, the, the Carter Putzes of the world. Um, you know, is there anybody right now that, is, that, uh, that you look to, to be a big contributor that maybe we wouldn't know about and, and we can keep an eye on ourselves? Absolutely. I mean, you never – through the portal, you're never going to replace the leadership of a Zach Prasner, of a Carter Putz, the toughness of a Coatsy. Those guys were just so invested in this place and, and will never, never replace, you know, what, what they meant to it. But, uh, but certainly I think we did a great job replacing the athleticism and, and staying uh, from a skill set. I think we did a great job of that. And, you know, you know, one in particular, I mean, we brought in, we brought in several outfielders, um, one in particular is a, a young man by the name of David Glancy from St. John's 
um, up in New York, up in Queens, New York. Uh, David's been several times an old Big East performer. You know, he's played in the Cape for two years. When he left the Cape, he left the Cape mid-year to start to, to get ready for summer school here. Um, he was leading the Cape in home runs. Super athletic. I think he's got a chance to steal some bases and 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 hit towards the top or middle part of the of the lineup. We have a, a transfer from Michigan by the name of Tito Flores. Uh, and Tito's played and started for four years at the University of Michigan. Um, he's just kind of that that consummate, you know, do it all, grind it out player. Uh, he's a guy who can really uh, play all three outfield positions. You know, taking a bat for you, hit for some power for you when you need him to, and uh, just really a a really good college, complete college baseball player. I'm um, excited about a couple guys on the infield. Josh Hahn from UCLA, he led them in hitting last last year, and uh, and and Simon Bumgart, a transfer from Tulane, uh, who hit 13 home runs for Tulane last year, will also be a guy I see coming in and making a making a huge impact. Uh, Nate Hardman on the mound is is a is a guy who closed for Evansville last year at over 10 saves. So having that experience on the back end, I thought adding a somebody with that type of closer mentality we needed to do. So we brought him in and, and a young guy by the name of Bennett Flynn uh, from Davidson College, who was uh, who had closed some games and, and did some setup for for uh, Davidson as well. And both those guys are you know low 90s guys with just power, power, power breaking balls. Um, that are going to be tough to hit at the back end, at the back end of the uh, of the game, and had a transfer from from um, from Harvard come in, uh, who who came in at the wire. We got him really really at the end of the summer, and uh, it came down to us and a couple other schools, and we got a chance to win him out. Will Jacobson, but I'm excited about Will. Uh, he was a two way player at Harvard, but just focusing on pitching right now, and has been up to the mid 90s in his in his bullpen. So that's certainly certainly excited. And then, you know, they're, they're the freshman class, you know, uh, on the positional player side, you know, we got a couple catchers in there, Carson, uh, Carson Tinney from out of Colorado. I think he, in my, in my short time to get a chance to evaluate Carson, I think he's as good of a, of a catching prospect as there might be um, in that freshman class in the country. I really do. And, and he's just, he's just so big and powerful. I'm hoping he can stay behind there, but his arm, uh, really, really plays. He's got terrific hands, and I, I think the bat really projects for sure. And and competing against him in the catcher position, uh, Troy Reader and Davis Johnson, both really good athletic catchers. And we needed to we needed to beef that up a little bit. We needed some catching um, depth for certain. And then I think there's a couple guys on the mound in that freshman class: Jack Rydell, Keenan Moore, um, DJ Helwig, Hagen, Hayden Ward. These are all guys who are six foot three, six foot four. And, you know, some of them are mid nineties guys right now and they have power arms and, and some maturity. So, you know, and there's, there's other guys that are going to be at play a factor as well, but some of those guys have really stood out for me. And, and then, you know, you get the maturity of your guys, right. You know, uh, you know, just watching Carter Spivey and David Lally come back and the way they're doing their work right now, they're different guys. Uh, you know, they're, they're so much more mature and, Jack Penny had an all-star summer in the Cape, playing shortstop every day. So wow. we're, we're hoping perhaps he can slide in and and you know there's no replacing Zach, but I'm hoping he can go in there and 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 fill that gap. And he's such a talented player. I think we've only started. You know, obviously got injured at the last at the end of last year, but he has such an upside. And we're ready for Esteban to make that next step. T.J. Williams played center field, was an all-star in the New England League this summer. Um, I think he's really going to come on this year and, nice. and really really grow. So. You know, I'm excited about all those guys. I, I really am. And, and they're hungry and they're ready to work. And, you know, they, they, some of them have, I don't want to say been in the shadows of maybe some of those putts and Coatsy and Praz, you know, but, but some of them let those guys lead. And now they're stepping into that leadership role. And that's, that's always cool to see those guys, those guys evolve. DM Jefferson's another one, you know, played yeah. a lot of this last year and we're ready for him to make a big step. So, you know, uh, you know, so far what I've seen is work. They want to work. They're, you know, they, they want to get better. Um, you know, the, I hear pinging in that in the yak hitting facility as I'm coming and going in morning and night. So somebody's in there getting better. Yeah, no, it's a, it's interesting because that's like the, the there's the pluses and minuses of that extra COVID year is that you get the benefits of incredible leadership, you right. know, over the last couple of years. But it does. It just kind of it delays that transition of leadership to, to some of these younger guys. That's right. Uh, so it's that's exciting to hear that some of them are picking it up and. Um, 
you know, and, and pumped. Non-conference schedule, is that something that's is still being put together? Is that, you know, are you going to get to the, the Michigans of the world this year or, you know, any other big games in the Midwest? Obviously, we know the ACC, ACC slate is going to be a killer and you're going to be down south at the beginning. But any, like, non-conference series or games that you're excited about? Yeah, so uh, we're going to open up at Rice. Okay. We'll open up at Rice, and then we will um, head to FIU in Miami. So we'll go to Florida International um, while we're in Miami. Or, or, I mean, I'm sorry, the second weekend. The third weekend, we all we are trying to bus always, so we're trying to get into that Nashville area from a weather standpoint. So uh, this year we're going to play Tennessee Tech, um, actually, uh, from a bus trip. <clears throat> Adding in mid-conference, we, we have added in um, Purdue. Uh, so we have added in Purdue with a home and home and a home and home with Michigan State. We're working on Michigan. They've had a coaching change. Well, I've had a coaching change. So we've we're we're working on that. We've added Indiana for the fall. We're going to play them in a fall game, and hopefully, we're looking to we're looking to get a game back with them um, down in Indianapolis in the Pro Park at some point as well. So so we are working on some of these rivalries and bringing and bringing some other teams some other teams back in here and, and, and branching out a little bit more um, as far as the away games. We, we are planning on playing Butler the last midweek of the season in the professional stadium down in Indianapolis as well. So to give that a try, a trial to see if that's something we want to continue to explore as an away game for us moving, right. moving forward. So, um, so yeah, the, um, you know, we, we do our spring break this year is, is we start out in Virginia tech and then we actually, fly to to Tallahassee so somehow we got the two airports that you literally can't between South Bend Blacksburg and Tallahassee you literally you, you, it's impossible to get there so if half the team shows up I'll be thankful and we'll call that a win for that week um, but we that'll be kind of our spring break trip with some games there in the Carolinas and and uh, um, so looking looking forward to getting ACC play uh, underway as well. Well, when you get down to Miami, I'm sure Javi Sanchez will, will look you up. Uh, you know, make sure make sure he covers like a team meal or, or something to that extent Definitely. while while you're down there. Definitely, we 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 already have that starved. In fact, it just says Javi's weekend on the uh, on the schedule. That's all it says. You know, I think Javi. Hey, don't, don't fire me up. Don't fire me up. Fire me up. <laughs> when Weldy when Weldy asked me to do this thing, I was like, I don't know, because Javi was the last one who who kind of ran one of these zooms and. And uh, and I was like, I, I mean, I'll do my best. Uh, you know, it's it's not going to be quite uh, the best looking uh, duo that that Javi created, but um, you know, maybe we can catch up and in, in at least some content on the other side of it. So, <laughs> uh, when you're talking about the fall, um, obviously a lot of guys are going to be, you know, a lot of alums, a lot of supporters are going to be coming back and forth, and we'll talk about the pit weekend here shortly. But you know, guys are coming back for other weekends, um, and they 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 want to take a you know, a look at the field or they want to, you know, see if you, what the schedule is. What does the typical schedule look like for you guys on, on a fall weekend? Can you talk a little bit about that? And and when do you guys wrap things up with the, the Blue Gold Series? So great question. And, and let me just start by saying, please, if you are on if, if you are on campus, please stop by. Stop by and, and see us and uh, say hello and hang out in the dugout for a little bit with us and and make yourself at home for sure. And and really, we start the 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 players start their early work right around two 30 in the afternoon. Um, Mondays will be our off days. Tuesday, we kind of do skill session groups because uh, the class is pretty heavy on Tuesday. So we're kind of in and out, you know, in, in pods a little bit. And then we lift at five 30 Wednesday, we go later. So Wednesday we go at, that's our football night. We go at five 30 on Wednesdays and that'll be a long, intense practice. Thursday's kind of very similar to Tuesday where we uh, are kind of skill work with a lift at the end. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are playing. And then Friday, that's that those games are going to start around four o'clock. Saturdays and Sundays will all basically depend on the, on the Irish football schedule, to be honest with you. If it's an afternoon game, we're going to be teeing them up at, at nine o'clock, you know, um, in the morning. If it's a, if it's a night game, I'm probably going to tee, tee it up more Sunday afternoon. I, I think I'm, causing myself my own headaches if we if we practice early on Sunday so I'll, I'll let the boys get up and go to church I want to get it let them get up and go to church so um but we love to hear yeah yeah so but yeah so I mean Friday Saturday Sundays we're in our squad and please say hello this 
this program belongs to you. The gate is is normally open. Um, you know, we have to be a little bit careful on football weekends, you know, as far as but we like to keep it open on Fridays and Saturdays for people to come in and uh and watch and watch practice and give everybody an extra bathroom. Yep. And some of those some of those rowdy ones end up actually being the former baseball players. So you, know, you, never know, you never know what you're me. gonna get. Yeah, excuse me if I throw you out and I don't know who you are. I apologize. I, I apologize. Um, lead with the years you played. There you but... go. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, you know, you mentioned a little bit just, you know, there were there were multiple questions just about the landscape of, of college athletics right now. And and uh, our friend Dick Nussbaum had a really good one about just the realignment into to mega conferences and um, you know, buzz about how that's bad for college baseball due to travel concerns and and conferences being by code. I mean, heck, the ACC may be adding Stanford, Cal, and SMU here in any moment. It sounds like. So, um, what are your thoughts on that? How do you see that impacting you know your program, but just you know college baseball as a whole? Yeah, no, I I agree. I think realignment has um, really put a strain on on. Olympic sports for certain, you know, you know, I think everyone's hope is, is that the footballs will eventually break away um, and do their own thing. And that perhaps we will all go back into our conferences again and the, you know, the basketballs and you'll see the PAC 10 come back and, and, and perhaps in Olympic sports and in basketballs and things like that, while football becomes these, these two league mega conferences where basically the top, you know, 70 schools just play each other. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think what you're reading is accurate. I, I don't think these players signed up to go coast to coast. I, I know, you know, just just speaking from our trial travel, you know, and in the in the ACC being a primary East Coast conference, just having to go on two and three hour flights, you know, how tough that is. We don't fly, you know, we get a chance to fly a few charters. We do, and then we're very blessed because of that. But we don't. Majority of our flights are are commercial and. And 30 guys, and like I just told you, we have a flight heading to to Blacksburg where half the team's flying out of Midway and half the team is flying out of uh, South Bend, you know, and we're going to meet in Blacksburg at some point. So to do those things from coast to coast is just not, it's not realistic and it's not what these young people and their families have signed up for. Many of these families have signed up to be able to watch their children play and be able to to travel to these games. And and so it's it's certainly not good for the sport and I don't want to get too far on my pedestal with that um, Stanford and Cal being left out of a conference, I don't think is right. And when you talk about two of the best academic, and I think Jack Swarbeck said it beautifully, when you talk about two of the best academic universities in the world, they play competitive Div division one sports to be left out as a mockery of college athletics, for sure. Um, does that mean I necessarily want them in the ACC? I'm going to travel there. I, I don't know about that, but um, certainly I want to continue to play in the ACC. I believe it's what's best for our baseball program. Um, I believe that it's what's best for our student athlete development. I think the ACC matches the most with Notre Dame's standards and, and, and Notre Dame's athletic profile. And so, you know, and, and I also get nervous that if we keep bringing, if we bring more teams in, we will lose other teams as well. And, and so that, that makes me nervous, um, as well. So, I mean, it's obviously a volatile time and, realignment's part of it and and it's i it's not getting fixed in the next year or two i don't think yeah i you talk about um you know the travel and things like that and and i was lucky enough to go to ireland this past weekend with the, with the football program which was was incredible saw a couple of folks that are on this call um out there and and, and had a blast you know i i can't remember the last time the baseball program went abroad but just as you were talking through that is that something that's on the horizon I feel like they they went down to I don't I, I I'm, I'm trying to think about when it was but you know is it a broad trip something that's out there and anytime yeah. soon yeah it, it is we're 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 actually talking about it now and it's something that that Jack Swarbrick really really wants us to do as programs you know he really yep. thinks it's, it's beneficial and so we certainly want to do it you know to be honest with you I want to do it, but I don't know. I don't necessarily know if I want. I, it, it's so tough from a baseball standpoint to pick your time because in the summer your players are gone and they're off playing in the summer. And that's a huge development time. If you do it over the winter break, 
you're ramping your pitchers up at a, at a, at a really difficult time. To be honest with you, I don't know if I want baseball to really be a big part of it. I, I, w- I would rather just go do the cultural piece and take these young men to areas that they maybe have never been. And yeah. maybe we train our, ourselves and we and we work out by ourselves and we do clinics and expand the game. That would be the thing for me. It would be yeah. expand the Notre Dame brand, do clinics, do some teaching. Um, but maybe maybe it's Rome, maybe it's Italy, something like that. It doesn't, you know, I, I think right now everybody – think south america you know because of the the baseball connection right right but i i don't know if baseball really needs to be the biggest part of that i think it's more about maybe baseball can be the outreach part of it um and and we can serve a little bit through baseball while doing some cultural pieces uh, um, as well so i would love to do it and it is something that we're discussing and and something that i you know is definitely on my board Nice. Well, I mean, if you if it comes a point where you need some extra staff to go on the trip, I'm I'm happy to to join in <laughs> and and see what we can do. Um, so you you talked a little bit about NIL, touched upon it briefly. A um, couple questions about that, and you talk about obviously you hear about these incredible opportunities for football players. We know it's not at that type of level um, in in college baseball, at least not. <laughs> at Notre Dame, I don't know exactly what the SEC looks like or some of the the other ACCs for ACC schools. Um, but are you able to to share any interesting NIL, NIL deals that that uh, current players are benefiting from, or just talk more to to the details of that? Yeah, I, I think it's it's expanded, and in, in, in you know basketball is usually a year behind football, and then the Olympic sports and, and baseball probably being at the higher end of that is usually about two to three years up, you know, after football. And then, so it's hitting us right now, basically. It was, it was very quiet through the first, the first couple of years. And now the transfer market this past, this past summer was um, insane, uh, you know, to put it politely and, and what's going on at, uh, you know, at the highest level is, is, you know, it's, you know, it's it's hard to really really explain how far it's kind of come, but um, you know we Notre Dame is committed to doing it the right way. You know one of the things we talk about with our recruits for our NIL and our program stands for name image for a lifetime. You know you come to Notre Dame and that's what this event will be like on October twenty seventh, twenty eighth. That is our NIL when 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 we have the ability for our players to network with you guys. Um, and, and get a chance to meet and, and really see the Notre Dame network living, breathing, and thriving. That is that is the NLI that we preach or the NIL that we preach. Um, name, image for a lifetime, and and I, I will always believe that that trumps everything. Now, at the baseball level, NIL and collectives, we hear all the stories on TV of the football and the basketball players, and and that's the one percent, but. At our level, what it's really what it really has become is extra scholarship dollars. To be quite honest with you, is is it's really become, um, you know, eleven point seven is the max what we talked about. Well, now most teams are playing at about most competitive teams are playing at about fourteen or fifteen scholarships, um, and that's what the NIL money and the collectives have done is they've kind of just closed that gap to where basically young young guys don't pay for school you know, and, and families aren't paying for school much anymore. And so, so what was 11, seven is now kind of increased to, to 14 or 15. And that's kind of where the ACC is sitting right now. Um, we're going to have to, you know, we're certainly not there. Uh, we're going to have to continue to work and, and strive to get there. And I know the, the NIL department here at Notre Dame has continued to branch out and research that. And because it's regardless of, of, how we think about it. And I do think it's short-sighted. I really do, but it's here and, and we, we are competing in it and we, you know, and we are seeing the effects of it all around the country. The majority of the world that we are living in right now is it's much more of a skull. It's a much more of a scholarship supplement than it is players getting cars and, and huge cash and, and, and things like that. At least that's what, that's what we have found. Yeah. When you, um, you know, when I used to to meet with with players, and we've had some conversations when I was an academic counselor, just talking through the resources and and just what's different about Notre Dame from my own experience and and, and talking to others. Um, you talk a lot about the network, and you talk about how Notre, that that sets Notre Dame apart from 
in my mind, any school in the country. Um, but it's one thing to talk about it, and it's another thing to to actually make it tangible for these guys. Um, we've talked a little bit about some ideas that you have, and and this is kind of leading into that. Hey, there's a bunch of people on this call. How can we help you be successful? Um, so any ideas or any thoughts that you have that you want to share with this group in particular would be great. Absolutely. So everything really starts, you know, with with our legacy weekend on October 27th and 28th, and I hope you all have an opportunity to come. And I know many of you would love to be there. And I'm going to explain to you how I would love for you to help here in a second. But please, if you can, I think it's going to be a wonderful event. One of the things that my players have come back to me in, and I've heard in some of their exit meetings is, is sometimes the Notre Dame network seems kind of like this myth, mythical thing that's out there. And you, you sometimes they, they just can't touch it. They don't know how to touch it. And so it's been a goal of mine this 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 year is to to bring that and make that much more tangible. And that's where I'm asking, you know, there, there's, there's three ways, you know, that really this call or, or the, the gentleman on this call can help us. And, and of course, one's financially, right. And you guys do a great job of supporting us and uh, the rock me fund and, and many of the things we get to do. I, I can't thank you enough, but that's obviously a way, but the other two are internship and mentorship. And if we have the ability and, it, and if you're on this call and you have the ability to help us with that, that 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 is something that I think allows for that Notre Dame network to, for our players to actually see it and, and and get it get a get a piece of it and understand what that really means of how it how connected so many of us on this call really really are um, as far as who you knew that helped you get get started here or get or, or helped you out in the situation there and and so. We are going to have the networking event on October 27th, 28th, but also beyond that, I'm going to ask some of you, and I would love to have volunteers, if, if somebody would like to do this, is Zoom calls with our team. And it might not be our entire team. It could be everybody who's an accountant, you know, and an accounting major, those who are in finance, um, you know, somebody that's in, you know, in, in a different piece, whether it's technology in the technology sector, but if 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 there's a way that you could that you could bring some of your expertise and 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 combine that with your experience here, what it meant to you and, and how it served you moving through through your lifetime, like I said, that that is a big part of our NIL. Is if, if those players and we can actually show them that that you have the opportunity to make these connections to help you get started in your life and help you transform into who you want to become and then, and, and then give it back and then, and then give it back. And so um, that's really some of the stuff that, that I want to work on here through the fall semester, as we finish up with our fall season. And that ends, you mentioned the blue and gold blue and gold game will end um, the USC weekend will be kind of the final, the final then Cause then we go into uh, fall break and, and that, and then the, those eight weeks over fall break, what I'd like to do is, get an opportunity to set up zoom calls like this. And it could, like I said, it might be with the whole team. It could be with five or six, you know, five or six players that just have an interest in the, in the field that you're in. But um, I did that type of mentorship and, and the ability for them to, to pick your brain and, and talk to you about your business and, and how you got started, I think is just talk to somebody about how, you know, there are a lot, I got a couple of guys that are nervous about law school. You know, they're nervous about applying to law school right now. And, and so, just the ability to to reach out there and 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 help them and, and while you got them, fix their swings. Okay, <laughs> talk to about that point. If you guys, if if you do have some guys that are worried about law school, I think Dick Nussbaum is the better path to go over my brother Scott. So just keep that in <laughs> mind as as, as you as you're talking through that with guys. Um, I, I just think I just think the amount of resources that are on this call uh, would stun myself and our players if we actually unpacked it and and like i said a, a, a 30 minute zoom yep. instead of me talking of you talking um it would be so profound to them and, and so impactful because they have no idea guys please understand they they don't know what they don't know yeah and, and that and that is real and there's not a you know i've i've been introduced to so many people but there's so many people that i haven't reached out to yet and, and people will come up to me and say have you reached out to this person no, I didn't know they existed, you know, because there's, there's really not a book. There's not a, they don't hand you a playbook and say, you know, here's every alum, here's every person's phone number. You know, 
you, 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 these lists and in these, in these relationships happen more organically than what you really think on calls like this. And, and just this guy knows this guy. And next thing you know, we're on a text thread. And, and so, so please, if we haven't reached out and you're so, like, we, we, we don't know what we don't know. And we, we, we we need your help financially mentorship, internship. If you know a company looking for interns, we try to send our juniors out who aren't, who aren't turning professionally. We like them to go out their, their junior year to go, uh, to go get an internship so they're not falling behind professionally um, as well. And, and so I think these are all um, really, really going to be impactful for our players. I appreciate that look at the, at the bigger picture because you do have a lot of guys that that junior summer can be a really tough one because you got guys that are trying to navigate, okay, what's the future look like for me? Like I came to Notre Dame and my goal was to be a professional baseball player. And now I'm starting to wonder if that's if that's going to happen. And so to have, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of coaches who would just say, hey, you got to go play. You got to get better. Like you can't you can't worry about what's after after school. So I, I appreciate the way that you're you're approaching that. I think, you know, one, Steve, I think the game's kind of changing and how it gets trained now. Right. So, yeah. you know, the, the 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 lifting piece is a lot bigger. Back in our day, you just played. Right. Like, like you like whatever was wrong, you just you just covered it in dirt and played with it. And, and that was, you know, now the way you train. So I think there's opportunities to internship and train at the same time differently. Um, but also, you know, I, I think that a lot of I didn't you, know, you asked me about things I've learned. One of the things I've learned here at Notre Dame is the amount of pressure they get on campus from their from their professors for not interning throughout their entire career. And for not take, you know, not having the ability to go, they feel like they're behind on their peers on the classroom. So, you know, we need to make that up as as well. Um, and I think that I think through the help of of this call, we can do that. Yep, I've already had Randall Brooks already sent me a message saying, "Hey, sign me up. I'm I'm happy to do it." And and to that point, um, you know, I I'm happy. Like Coach Stiffler is obviously gonna gonna be super busy as the spring comes along, as the fall. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to me too as as a resource. Um, I've gotten to know Coach well, and and I'm happy to kind of be that bridge. If if people are looking for ways to get involved, um, I'm here on campus. You know, it's 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 easier for me to to kind of make that connection. So if there's ever anything that comes up, and I've passed this along to to Matt Weldy as well, um, don't ever hesitate to to reach out. I you know th that would be a pleasure for me. It's, it's it's fun for me to stay involved now that I'm not the academic counselor making sure that guys are doing their work and, and, and getting the grades that they need to get. Uh, this is a bit more of a fun way to, to stay involved with the program. And Steve, let me mention as well, and, and you know, and that alumni event on the 27th, 28th, we're going to have our, our signed 25 class will be here, our committed 25s. And so, and several of our 24s will be coming in as well. That That's by design. We want them in front of you guys talking to you guys because your stories went, 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 you know, that of connection and, and how you got to Notre Dame and, and, and how it, how it has impacted you. I cannot relay them well enough, to be honest with you in, in the recruiting process, it, that connection and story. And if you guys have these great stories, because it's so impactful when I'm zooming with parents or I'm talking with parents to be able to sit there and say, this is a guy from right next to your hometown came here you know, ended up his roommate, met his roommate here, met his wife here, you know, or made this connection here. And now he is now he is working for him. And and, and how how some of you, the, the, the stories I've heard just through the connection pieces that you all have made playing baseball and and also on campus is amazing. And so we have to get this to our recruits because yeah. I, I think that's where our name, image and likeness really separates us. You know, yes, I'm always I always got to work on getting the cost of school down. No question about it. Um, an equivalency sport, whether it's through scholarship, financial aid, NIL, the cheaper I can make Notre Dame, the better players we're going to get. Plain, plain, plain and simple. Um, you know, but at the same time, the lat what's going to keep them here and keep them staying is them really understanding what this what this is about, and uh, and that really comes from from you all. Yeah, that's great. Well, Matt, I don't know. I, I, we got about four minutes left on the call. I wanted to hopefully leave at least a, a little bit. Um, you know, I got a, a rapid fire here because Javi said that that played well last time. So I, <laughs> I, I have some questions here. Uh, but if there is um, any other like just live questions, anybody that has any thoughts or any a question for Coach Stiffler, we got a couple minutes. 
Hey, hey Steve, this is Rambo. Yeah. Can I chime in just really quick? Because I think Coach sure. Stickler and Coach, it's nice seeing you last weekend or last Friday <laughs> on campus. Um, one of the things I, once again, I put it in the chat, tie me up for the mentorship opportunity. Uh, but, you know, being a, and I, I'll just get more personal for myself, being a, a minority going to Notre Dame playing baseball, I would love to see more minority baseball players on our baseball team because I see the opportunity post uh, <clears throat> graduate from Notre Dame, what it has provided me. Uh, and, you know, I have a story for this group here and Notre Dame, to your point, that name, image and likeness piece that you talked about, name, image for a lifetime. My second job, which has propelled my career, the, the, the hiring manager flat out told me, she said, hey, you're probably not the most qualified to have the most experience, but you went to Notre Dame and I know the quality of people that are there. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. And so for our, our baseball players to hear that and then take advantage of those opportunities, the brand is real. You have to leverage it. Uh, then also you have to network. It, Dick Nussbaum has helped me out many a times. I mean, when my, my mother passed, him and Matt drove up here to Chicago. So the network is important is how do you leverage it and how do you use it? So if we can arm our student athletes with that information, and I see all of my former teammates on here, Scott Solman, Brett, us. I mean, we are all doing amazing things in our professional career. We have an opportunity to reach back and help our individuals. And so one of the things, once again, I'm willing to help, but I would also like to see more minority players get to Notre Dame and benefit the way I have benefited from the university. Well, and, and I, I agree with everything you're saying. And, and, uh, you know, we have three minority players in the 24 class. You know, it, it, you know the, the, our our locker room has to, our locker room has to look like America, <laughs> plain and simple. You know, and so you know, I think that is something that you know, again, you know, our focus is getting the best players here for sure, no matter mm -hmm. you know, no matter where. But like at the same time, uh, I think we have to represent. We have to look like America. You know, and that's uh, we're a national brand. And so we need to continue to to emphasize that. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Let's get more Randall Brooks's to our school. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No and doubt. I, Thanks, Coach, Dave. Coach, there's one important thing that I think you need to do sooner rather than later is when are you going to sign Will Solman to a letter of intent? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> coming out of coming out of middle school camp, it was we. It, it, you know, had they not changed the rules, I would have thought about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, what a player. Wow. No, he's, uh, <laughs> he is a terrific player. We had, a we had a wonderful middle school camp here and, uh, and, and he, he was in it and we had a ton of fun in the home run derby and, uh, he was in that as well. And so he's, he is a great, he is a great player for sure. So I'll, I mean, he's, uh, he's all on the Indiana Bulls black. So don't worry. Well, he'll be, he'll be getting recruiting and camp letters soon. So. We got an I'm NIL, yeah, we got an sure NIL deal in the works too. Coach. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no I'll talk NIL anytime. No, uh, I try to help him understand that he's like he is a psalm and he's big right now, but he's got about another inch left. So I'm, I'm hoping he clears <laughs> that five eight five nine uh, at that height. So he's he's got a long way ahead of him for sure. Hey, John hey, Coach, Murphy, uh, yeah. John Murphy, one of the, yeah. the biggest supporters of this program, you know, put a, a note there in the chat, and and I couldn't agree more, John. Yeah, I mean, I think if I mean if if this group and others we know are up for the idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of some kind of organizing framework to help sort of bring action to some of Coach's ideas here and unburden him from having to be the the straw that stirs every drink on these initiatives, I think that would be really helpful. So we can we can talk more about that. For sure. Good. Yeah, and I'm like I said, I'm happy to coordinate. I'm I'm uh you know, Javi, Javi Sanchez and I, we, we talked through this a little bit, trying to, yeah. you know, put together a list, I think, first and foremost, for, for that time after the fall, making sure yeah. that Coach is aware of those guys out there that have had success and, and could yeah. could really, um, you know, provide some great pr perspective for our guys. So Awesome. Hey, last um, one real, real quick, um, real quick. How's yeah. our guy Jack Finley recovering from his surgery? Yeah, Jack's doing great. Uh, Jack's doing great. He's... Uh, Starts throw program, I think, in about uh, he should be pushing me. He might be r right around a week right now. He'll start he'll start his throw program, but his spirits are great. He's out there doing PFPs. I mean, he's you know running pass routes with the football like you wouldn't know. You know, he, he's course. a pretty good wide receiver right now um, on the on the touch football team. 
So, um, but no, he, he's doing great, uh, good spirits. He's worked hard all, all summer. And so, you know, hopefully uh, that's going to continue to go smooth. We obviously need him back. So. Um, cool. Great to hear. Yeah, he's doing great. Well, I, uh, Coach, can't thank you enough uh, for taking the time. It means a ton just to, to help us stay connected and, and help us get a, a little peek behind the curtain as to, to what's going on in the program. It's, it's always fun to, to catch up and, and hear, uh, hear about all the exciting things that you got going on. So uh, please, guys, reach out if there's ever anything that, uh, that I can do or, or Coach can do. If you're going to be on campus this fall, would love to, to, uh, to hear from you and chat. And, uh, yeah, go Irish. Go Irish. Guys, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you this fall.